So this is a 1965 Ludwig Super Classic kit. Um, it's a 20 inch bass drum, 13 inch rack tom and a 16 inch floor tom. Really popular kits in the 60s and 70s. They sound great. I think the shells are a sort of mix of mix of woods, poplar and mahogany. So they sound quite warm and dark. They don't project in the same way that modern drums do. Um, they weren't designed to make loads of noise because bands weren't as loud back then. So they, they're just designed to be really good sounding instruments. Um, and because of that, they're quite warm and focused and they record really well because, because the sound is quite contained. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and the same with the cymbals, really. These are old cymbals. These are old uh, late 60s Zildjian's. Um, and they're not, um, they're not as top-endy as modern cymbals. So they, again, they just sort of sit in the mix a little bit more comfortably, really. They don't cut through at the top. They're not quite so abrasive. And I think the sound that you get from these drums is, is, is one of the reasons, I mean, apart from the miking techniques, obviously, but it's, it's one of the reasons that a lot of those old records sound so sort of warm and inviting and less in your face and abrasive as, as some modern records do. Not that that's any better or worse, it's just it's one of the reasons that they're different. Um, moving on to the snare drum. <coughs> this is a Rogers um, Dynasonic snare drum, wooden one, um, quite rare. And um, Rogers came up with this system <coughs> on the snare wire on the bottom, so rather than stretching the wire across the drum, they sort of came up with this cage that held the wires and could pre-tension it before you sort of put it on. So the wires are theoretically are sort of evenly tensioned across the drum. This is a 1970s Ludwig 402, which is a lot like the Ludwig 400 that we've recorded on one of the other kits. It was um, John Bonham, the drummer from Led Zeppelin, used to use one of these all the time. It was his sort of preferred drum. And it's, it's a great sounding drum. It's a sort of metal shell, so it cuts through quite well. But it's still got a lot of sort of body and, um, and warmth to it as well. It's not, you know, it's not a thin drum. It's quite a, quite a meaty snare and, and really well used on loads of old records. So a very sort of useful one to have samples of. And the third one we used was this 1950s Radio King, which is made by a company called Slingerland. Um, it's a maple shell. And um, unlike a lot of drums that are made of plies, which are then sort of glued together, this is made out of a solid piece of ma maple that is sort of bent round. So the actual shell is a complete bit of wood. So it resonates really well. Um, and again, records really nicely. It's got a nice sort of warm sound because it's quite deep. It's quite sort of big and fat. And if you tune it down a bit, again, you get that West Coast sort of doof, Carlos Vega, sort of James Taylor records kind of heavy, fat backbeat, which, um, which is really cool. So this is a 1968 Heyman kit. Um, Heyman were drums that were made in the UK, um, kind of to compete with Ludwig and Gretsch, obviously, which were American-made drums that people were importing. They are a little bit more abrasive sounding, a little bit brasher, but, um, but they've still got that sort of old vintage warmth. And they were very popular in England in the sort of late 60s and early 70s. Um, Jim Capaldi used them um, and a whole host of other sort of English session drummers. A 22 inch bass drum, 12 inch, 13 inch rack toms and a 16 inch floor tom. And uh, the snare we've got with this kit is probably the most recorded snare of all time. It's a Ludwig 400 60s model. Um, it's made from this sort of lud alloy, um, alloy which they sort of put chrome plating on and because um, the chrome plating didn't really um, sit properly chemically on top of the alloy, they, all the old ones are kind of pitted. You can see it's all sort of peeling away, um, which makes it look a bit cooler, I always think, a um, bit of character, and doesn't affect the sound at all anyway. But a great sounding drum, metal shell, so it sort of projects a little bit, really versatile, five and a half inches deep. And um, like I say, this drum is probably on pretty much every record that's recorded in the 60s. I mean, you'll, you, you will own a record that this drum is on. Um, all the Motown stuff, uh, the Stax stuff. Jesus, I mean, ev everything, pretty much everything. The chrome never quite sort of stuck on it properly, so you see these old ones, it all sort of pits away. 
which um, I've always thought it looks really cool anyway. It adds a bit of character to it and uh, doesn't affect the sound at all. Pretty much any Elvis Costello record you listen to will be one of these. And then the cymbals on this kit, again, we've got some old ones, some 15 inch um, Tosco hi-hats here, um, an 18 inch Paste 2002 crash cymbal. Uh, John Bonham used to use those, sort of very popular in the 70s. And uh, an old sort of 20 inch Tosco's Thin Crash that's quite good as a, as a sort of washy ride as well. So when we sampled the kits for the um, hit packages, we recorded the drums at loads of different velocities because um, we found, as you probably know, that when you hit a drum quietly, it doesn't actually resonate um, and therefore sound the same way as it does when you hit it loudly. Um, so it stands to reason that the more um, volume levels or velocities that you hit it at, if you record loads of those, when you then sort of put that into, the, um, into contact and replay it off a pad or program it in, you get a much more accurate representation of what the drum does as you hit it softly or loudly. Um, and that's the same with all of the drums, particularly the snare drum where we recorded it in the centre of the drum and then at the edge of the drum and then with various different types of dampening and then um, uh, rim shotting it as well so you catch the rim and the head at the same time and then also the side stick as well. So you get a variety of all the different sounds that you can get from each of the drums. Um, and with the bass drum, we used um, a couple of different bass drum beaters, the sort of normal bass drum beater that you get, the sort of quite a hard felt beater. And then we got one of these which were popular in the 60s, which is a much sort of softer thing that gives you a much sort of softer sound when you hit the kick, less attack and a bit more sort of mm. So we did those so that they were sort of, again, so that you get the same sort of um, variety of sounds that you'd have had um, when you recorded drums in different ways back in the old days.